you and Roberto Soto and Savannah. I don't even know who Roberto Soto is. I don't know if you've ever brought that name up on the show. No, I haven't. I was first breaking in into business in Savannah, Georgia. And Roberto Soto used to be the Georgia state champion. And he gave his notice and he left. I think he went to mid Atlantic, what we used to call Charlotte, but I don't know what happened there, but he didn't much like it. So he comes back to, to Georgia. And when he left, he was in the main events and when he came back, now he's down in the second match with me. And he didn't like that, I don't think. So we was having this match in Savannah, Georgia, and all of a sudden, he was just really stiff and, like, hitting me pretty hard. So I had him down in a, like, a sitting back chin lock. And he reaches up and grabs my hair, and I say, and he pulled it hard. I said, whoa, I didn't say that for the first time. Second time, he did it again. Of course, the referee was knocking his hand off. I said, hey, he's up on that hair, and that's it. He come up, and he was cussing me in Spanish, like you mf -er, and he hit me two or three times hard, right in the eye, bam, bam. And I'm very nearsighted anyway. And you don't expect for your opponent to get up and just punch your lights out. So I lock up with him again. I said, come on, man. I don't know. I didn't know the problem with him. I said, let's work. And he hits me again. I said, okay, I got the message. I rolled out of the ring, told the referee, Charlie Smith, just count me out. And I'd only been in the business like two years. And we was in front of the crowd in Savannah and it was doing really well. It probably seats. 5,000, he was probably between 3,500 and 4,000 people there. And I never will forget this. They're all ready for the, for the simulated stuff, but when a real fight broke out, they just got quiet. Now, whoa, what is this? And I, when I left, they knew something had happened that wasn't supposed to happen. So they rung the after when I was going back in the restroom, I could hear them ringing the bell and winner by count at Roberto Soto. And I went in the back and Abdullah was there, a few more guys. And I, I looked at my eye in the mirror and it was bleeding. I said, oh, okay. Now, if you don't make a stand when, when that happens, people lose total respect for you. But I wasn't even thinking about that. And I'm thinking about, no, it's, I got to answer this somehow. So I went to a closet. And since I'm blind as hell, I'm nearsighted as hell. I don't even wear my glasses when I'm doing this podcast. But I'm very nearsighted. So when he went to throw in the, the punch, you just think it's a regular punch till it gets there. And he nailed me. So I went to a janitor's closet, opened it up. There's a big mop panel in there. I broke it over my knee. And then I went across in the back of Savannah Civic Center to the other dressing room and kicked open the door and walked in. And there he was. I said, hey, Soto. He said, yeah, chinga tu madre, which is Spanish for mother, you know. And when he came, I just laid him open. Then I stunned him. It was a pretty thick mop handle, too. I stunned him. I took him down, and I put my finger in his eye. I was getting ready to try to pull his eye out. And then they separated us. And, and I remember that night, uh, they took him to the hospital. He had 16 stitches in his head by the time the night was over. And I could have probably taken stitches there, but I didn't go. And because Savannah from Atlanta is about three and a half hours. So I rode, I rode all the way back to Atlanta, bleeding. And he didn't get back in after going to the hospital till about eight o'clock in the morning. So, but I will say this, I never had another problem with Mr. Soto. Of course, I never worked with him again. 
So on my first night in Puerto Rico, this that that's one story. This is another story. My first night in Puerto Rico, I'm booked with him. I thought it was a setup because he's Puerto Rican. So I went to Carlos and I says, I don't know if you know this. I just want to tell you that me and Roberto Soto, we had a hell of a fight about two years ago. And I don't trust him. He said, no, nothing's going to happen here. If anything happens, he says, we'll fire him right on the spot. I said, okay. And I went out there and we worked like two pros should work. Nothing ever happened. He never brought it up. I never brought it up. It was just one of those things. But that was the fight. <clears throat> I remember if I'd have went back in that dress room and tried to like just throw hands with him, he'd have probably beat the crap out of me. But when you got something in your hand, an equalizer, which is what I needed, you know, I kind of, uh, I kind of settled the question when I went back in his dressing room. And when I went back in there, yeah, all the guys jumped in because I think all the guys were watching the match anyway on from the other side and they knew what had happened. So, but I never will forget that fight. It was a, it was an eye opener or an eye closure. In other words, so, <laughs> I was going to say you split his eye open. And, so it, like... and it, it took about a week for my eye to go down. It was swollen and, but was there any punishment handed down? Who was the who was the owner of Georgia at this time? It, it wasn't Ann Gunkel, was it? it? Was this after? No, it was. This is before they did the switch. This was before Ray Gunkel died. He was the owner. No, and Tom Renesto was the booker. And if any uh, punishment was going to be handed down, it would have had to come from Tom, and Tom knew both of us. Because I used to ride with Tom. I actually was riding with Tom that night that it happened. And he was an old timer. So he understood that sometimes things like that is going to happen. I'm actually uh, kind of amazed that they don't have more of that, especially in the independence. And you could see WWE or AEW having a fight. They would have to hand out some punishment there or some fines or something. Well, Bill Watts, we'd have probably got a fine, but but not there. I, I wouldn't find anything. Hell, I wouldn't make enough money to get fined. Hell, if they'd have fined me, I'd have had to, I'd have had to went and got a loan <laughs> to have some money to pay it. I'm, uh, I'm just looking at Roberto's career and where he was. He... He was even briefly in the WWF, in fact, in 1984, but uh, I don't know if he did too much, really, with his career. It's just a name that I've never heard of before. No, he the... was a... He was a... Uh, just a guy. Hmm? And Tom Tom Ernesto was Hispanic. He was from California. He was, like, Mexican-American, and, and he liked Roberto, and he made him the champion. Good looking guy at the time. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But I've been in a few fights. <laughs>